Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's Mrs. Lewis, your middle school librarian. Um, I'm recording this on Monday. It's rainy. And I mean, are really are we really surprised um, at another disappointing snow, right? Snow. I know. I was not going to lie a little disappointed, but I definitely tried not to get my hopes up too much. Um, but I'm really sad that it's just raining. So I don't know about you, but when it rains, I like to be extra super duper comfortable. So I have like my softest hoodie on. Uh, where's my? It's a Captain Marvel hoodie. Higher, further, faster. I love Captain Marvel. She's awesome. Um, I have a Disney Hollywood Studios mug today. Ooh, this side. This way. There we go. With my tea. Mm. It's very comforting. Uh, and I want to see how you guys are doing, how you're feeling. Um, you know, was your weekend any different from the last week? I don't know. I didn't make my kids do any schoolwork. Um, I figured we'd let that go. So, and my birthday was yesterday. Um, so I ate cake. That's about the only way that it was different. <laughs> oh, and I didn't do the dishes because it's my birthday. Why would I do the dishes? But I don't know if your parents will let you like get away with that. So good luck trying though. I believe in you. Um, so today's book, interestingly, I have been searching and searching and searching. I could have sworn I owned this book and I don't. So I'm actually going to have to go buy it, but that's okay. I'm actually going to show, show you what it looks like, um, on Sora. So, um, let me backtrack a little bit that of course, whenever I do these talks, I'm going to try and recommend books or resources I think are really fun. And I'm going to recommend things I really enjoy because uh, right now that is something that I think, you know, hopefully it makes you happy. It's making me happy to talk about some of my favorite books. And um, I have a lot of favorites, though. I read a lot of books. So if you weren't aware, um, since I'm a librarian, reading is part of my job. And uh, I read, let's see, last year I read, I believe it was 94 books. I do a lot of audiobook reading. Um, and reading 94 books, I definitely don't buy every single book. I don't, I don't have that kind of money. Um, I love buying, I do love buying books. Um, but I definitely can't buy every single book, right? That's just crazy expensive. I have to buy things like food and clothing for my kids. So um, I use our Sora app a lot. So if you aren't using Sora, you really, really should be, okay? Um, it is a way that you can read so many books OK, there's no limit on the number of books you can have out in a month. Like some libraries are like, oh, you can only check out three books a month on there. The only limit we have is that you can only check out three books at a time. Right. But as soon as you're done with it, you can return it and you can check out another book right away. Um, I love Sora because it's for uh, your books are good for two weeks that you get to borrow them. Um, audiobook or ebooks. They're both on there. And um, even better is that it automatically will return it for you uh, at the end of the two-week period. So if you tend to forget um, when you finish a book to return it, then it'll just do it for you, which is really fantastic. So um, that's definitely a huge benefit over physical library books that you don't have to remember to return the book on Sora. Um, but I also like that you can return it early. So if you finish your book and you are just ready to go to the next thing, you can return it and then check out another one right away. I absolutely love it. And then you can also put, uh, I think, up to three titles on hold, which means if there's a book that you want to check out and somebody else has it right now, you can put your name on it like you'll be the next person in line. So then you would um, put it on hold through your Sora account. And then when it's ready for you to check out, you would get an email in your school email. So make sure that you're checking that. OK, I'm sure by now we're a, a week into this. You should be checking your school email pretty often. Um, but you can check your school email and it'll tell you it's ready for you to download and read. And then you get two weeks with the book. So um, I absolutely love Sora. And if it wasn't for Sora or OverDrive or the library in general, like I, I utilize um, three different libraries. OK, and um, that is how I keep up with my reading, the things that I like to read and um, you know, I, I do that because I like reading, but I also do it because that is partially what I'm here for, for you guys, right? I'm here to help you find the right book. So even if it's a book that maybe I personally wasn't my favorite or it wasn't one that I was a huge fan of, I know that that book is right for somebody. It's right for one of you, 
Okay. So um, I'm going to try and vary up the books I'm talking about because, you know, I definitely have my own preferred genres that I like to read, but I'm going to try and keep this kind of, um, you know, variable about the different books that I'm going to be talking about. So what I will do since this time, uh, I don't actually have the physical book. Again, boggles my mind because I love this book and I'm talking about it all the time in the library. Um, instead, I am going to read from the sample. So this book is an older book. Doesn't mean it's not good. Doesn't mean it's, you know, less relevant or anything, but it is in our mystery section in the middle school library. And in this book, a young girl, middle school age, right? Uh, this girl gets called to the reading of a dead man's will. Okay, so when someone dies, they have a will that says who gets everything, who gets what. And this man that has died is a multimillionaire. Okay, rich guy. She's like, oh, I inherited something? That's pretty cool. I don't even know this man, right? But it turns out she's one of 12 people that got that invitation. And when the, the attorney, the lawyer, reads the will, the instructions from the man who died say, one of you is my heir and one of you has killed me. You have to work together to figure out who killed me. And when you figure that out, you will figure out who is the person that will inherit all of my wealth. Huh. So it's not even like they're gonna divide it up among these 12 people that are not related at all. Um, it's a murder mystery almost, right? They have to figure it out though. And that's how they're gonna find out who is the person um, that's gonna inherit all this money. So. It's really exciting book. Excuse me. Um, my allergies are not great on rainy days. <laughs> so the book I am talking about is called The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. I'll show you what it looks like. Ooh, mm, uh, uh, there we go. Okay. Westing Game. All right. Now you see how it says place a hold? So you can do that. It'll tell you how long you're going to have to wait right now. There's no wait. Or, well, there is a little bit of a wait, but there's only one person in front of you. So if you log on and you put place hold, you will be the next person to check it out. Okay. And that person, that two weeks is only assuming that person uses the entire two weeks. But remember, if um, they finish it early, they can return it early and you can get it sooner. Most ideal circumstance. All right. So let's read a sample of... The Westing Game. <clears throat> Oops, sorry. Um, it is, I haven't talked about this with the other books before, but it is a Newbery Medal winner. Um, it has won um, the Boston Globe Horn Book Award. Ooh, and it's an ALA notable book. I knew about the Newbery. Um, I didn't know about the other ones though. So it's got some clout behind it. <clears throat> There's lots of pages before we get to the first page, I guess. Hold on a second. <laughs> okay, here we go. Come on. Do, 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 do. Okay. Chapter one, Sunset Towers. The sun sets in the west. Just about everyone knows that. But Sunset Towers faced east. Strange. Sunset Towers faced east and had no towers. This glittery, glassy apartment house stood alone on the Lake Michigan shore, five stories high. Five empty stories high. <clears throat> then one day, it happened to be the 4th of July, a most uncommon looking delivery boy rode around town slipping letters under the doors of the chosen tenants to be. The letters were signed Barney Northrup. The delivery boy was 62 years old and there was no such person as Barney Northrup. The letter read, here it is, the apartment you've always dreamed of, at a rent you can afford in the newest, most luxurious building on Lake Michigan. Sunset towers, picture windows in every room, a uniformed doorman, and maid service, central air conditioning, high-speed elevator, exclusive neighborhood, near excellent schools, etc., etc. You have to see it to believe it. But these unbelievably elegant apartments will be shown by appointment only. So hurry, there are only a few left. Call me now at 276-7474 for this once-in-a-lifetime offer. Your servant, Barney Northrup. 
P.S. I am also renting ideal space for a doctor's office in the lobby, coffee shop with entrance from the parking lot, high-class restaurant on the entire top floor. Six letters were delivered, just six. Six appointments were made and one by one, family by family, talk, 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 talk. Barney Northrup led the tours around and about Sunset Towers. Take a look at all that glass. One-way glass, Barney Northrup said. You can see out. Nobody can see in. Looking up the Wexlers, the first appointment of the day, were blinded by the blast of morning sun that flashed off the face of the building. See those chandeliers? Crystal, Barney Northrup said, slicking his black mustache and straightening his hand-painted tie in the lobby's mirrored wall. Pretend I that. How about this carpeting? Three inches thick. Gorgeous, Mrs. Wexler replied, clutching her husband's arm as her high heels wobbled in the deep plush pile. She, too, managed an approving glance in the mirror before the elevator door opened. You're really in luck, Barney Northrup said. There's only one apartment left, but you'll love it. It was meant for you. He flung open the door to 3D. Now, is that breathtaking or is that breathtaking? Mrs. Wexler gasped. <gasps> it was breathtaking. All right. Two walls of the living room were floor-to-ceiling glass. Following Borny Northrup's lead, she oohed and awed her, her joyous way through the entire apartment. Her trailing husband was less enthusiastic. What's this? A bedroom or a closet? Jake Wexler asked, peering into the last room. It's a bedroom, of course, his wife replied. Looks like a closet. Oh, Jake, this apartment is perfect for us. Just perfect, Grace Wexler argued in a whining coo. The third bedroom was a trifle small, but it would do just fine for Turtle. I think what it, me it means having your office in the lobby, Jake. No more driving to and from work. No more mowing the lawn or shoveling snow. Let me remind you, Barney Northrup said, the rent here is cheaper than what your old house costs in upkeep. How would he know that? Jake wondered. Grace stood before the front window where, beyond the road, beyond the trees, Lake Michigan lay calm and glistening. A lake view. Just wait until these so-called friends of hers with their classy houses see this place. The furniture would have to be reupholstered. No, she'd buy new furniture. Beige velvet. And she'd have stationery made. Blue with a deckled edge. Her name and fancy address in swirling type across the top. Grace Windsor Wexler. Sunset Towers on the lake shore. Not every tenant to be was quite as overjoyed as Grace Windsor Wexler. Arriving in the late afternoon, Sidel Pulaski looked up and saw only the dim, warped reflections of treetops and drifting clouds in the glass face of Sunset Towers. You're really in luck, Barney Northrup said for the sixth and last time. There's only one apartment left, but you'll love it. It was meant for you. He flung open the door to a one-bedroom apartment in the rear. Now, is that breathtaking or is that breathtaking? Not especially, Sidel Pulaski replied as she blinked into the rays of the summer sun setting behind the parking lot. She had waited all these years for a place of her own. Uh, sorry. And here it was in an elegant building where rich people lived. But she wanted a lake view. The front apartments are taken, Barney Northrop said. Besides, the rent's too steep for a secretary's salary. Believe me, you get the same luxuries here at a third of the price. At least the view from the side window was pleasant. Are you sure nobody can see in? Sidel Pulaski asked. Absolutely, Barney Northrup said, following her suspicious stare to the mansion on the North Cliff. That's just the old Westinghouse up there. It hasn't been lived in for 15 years. Well, I'll have to think it over. I have 20 people begging for this apartment, Barney Northrup said, lying through his buck teeth. Take it or leave it. Uh, I'll take it. Whoever, whatever else he was, Barney Northrup was a good salesman. In one day, he had rented all of Sunset Towers to the people whose names were already printed on the mailboxes in an alcove off the lobby. Who were these people, these specially selected tenants? They were mothers and fathers and children, a dressmaker, a secretary, an inventor, a doctor, a judge. And, oh yes, one was a bookie, one was a burglar, one was a bomber, and one was a mistake. Barney Northrop had rented one of the apartments to the wrong person. That's chapter one. Uh, so I need to sign off and I hope you guys enjoyed that. And don't forget to send me an email. Peace out for tough.